Где вы? Я жду на площади. Вы не поверите, но клянусь, я только что видел парня этого мстителя, Ника Фьюри. Я сделал. In January 2022, the Marvel Cinematic Universe came to a town near me. Halifax, in the county of West Yorkshire in England, was used in Disney Plus's Secret Invasion series as a stand-in for Russia. More specifically, the MCU redressed the 18th century Grade 1 listed building, the Peace Hall, to become Red Square. It looks like the filmmakers wanted to have a three-story building with a dome, but the Peace Hall is only two stories. Being Grade 1 protected means they couldn't exactly erect a set on top. It was also probably cheaper to add in the extra elements using visual effects through a digital set extension. Set extensions are probably the oldest form of visual effects. 100 years ago, these matte paintings were accomplished by placing a pane of glass in front of the camera, and an artist, live on location, would paint on the glass to create an elaborate backdrop. Today, with just desktop computers and camera tracking, set extensions can feel more real than ever before. As the Peace Hall is less than an hour's drive from where I live, I decided to head over there one quiet morning and see if I could shoot in the same location and get an acceptable result. I'm going to go through two different techniques. The first is pretty quick to do and you only need After Effects. The second uses Adobe Photoshop to really enhance the scene. And seeing as it's the hot new thing everyone's talking about, I'm also going to take a quick look at the Extend Image feature in Photoshop Beta. A quick confession, I turned up at the Peace Hall and discovered I had less than 10% charge on my phone. I would have liked a lot more time to experiment with shots and spend a little bit of time thinking about composition, but the battery was running down really quickly. I also wanted to try out CamTrack AR, which records video and accelerometer data from your phone, which can be exported for After Effects. The data export costs a £4.99 monthly subscription, but that's pretty reasonable if you only need it once as you can cancel at any time. You can also buy the app outright too, hashtag not being paid to say this. The results seem impressive, but I was distracted by the phone's charge. I think I missed a crucial step, as setting the ground only worked for the first shot. So instead, I used After Effects Camera Tracker, which you'll see worked perfectly well. One other thing to mention is that in the UK, almost all historic buildings are managed by some form of private trust or similar. The Peace Hall is technically private property, and they have the right to refuse filming. So while you can turn out with your camera, tripod, actors and crew, guerrilla style, you might well get turned away. That's not to say you will be. The Peace Hall's marketing team have posted on TripAdvisor they welcome applications for commercial filming. So after my initial visit, I thought I'd be a good boy and email a request for an application to do this properly, with a charged phone and more time. And I was ignored. I don't know if my email went into a spam folder, or if they just decided my channel was too small for them to be bothered with. Bit of a shame, but there you go. Rules might be different where you live, but it's worth checking out what you can and can't do beforehand. Here I am in After Effects, and first let's take a look at CamTrack AR's footage. I shot using an iPhone. The video files and accelerometer data are stored in iOS's Files app. From a Windows PC, the only way to gain access is via iTunes. But thanks to having the Adobe Creative Cloud app installed, I could copy the files directly into my Adobe Sync folder. Hashtag not being paid to say this. Once they've transferred over, in After Effects, I'll go to File, Scripts, Run Script File. Navigate to the first footage's location, and then double-click on the JSX file. A comp is created with the footage imported with a camera and 3D null object. I'll quickly make a solid, make it 3D, and center it on the null. You can see I got a pretty impressive result. I've possibly moved the phone too fast at some points. Rule one when shooting with tracking in mind is to move slowly. Rule zero being make sure you charge your camera beforehand. CamTrack AR has recorded at 1920 by 1440, 60 frames per second. My phone can shoot at 4K, but I'm not sure if it's possible to change these settings in the app. Like I said earlier, that ground null didn't line up correctly with my other shots, so instead I'll use this angle, which is looking at the same corner of the building as in the Secret Invasion trailer. And I'll go to Window, Tracker. And in the pop-up, click Track Camera. 
After Effects adds an effect to the video file and starts processing. While that's happening, take a look at the footage. I didn't stay in one place. Camera tracker seems to work best when the view translates. I also tried to keep to slow movements. Once the clip is processed, you can close the pop-up, and while it looks like nothing is different, that's because all the tiny tracking points are far away and tiny. First thing we need to do is identify a ground plane. Normally, you'd click on three separate points, but AE is helping us out and identifying a triangle for us. Click to select an appropriate triangle, then right-click and choose Set Ground Plane and Origin. Now I'm going to pick a point on the back wall. And right-click on it and choose Create Null and Camera. I get a camera and null object in 3D space. Let's move that to the start of the comp. So next, I'm going to find part of the video where I can see the entire back wall. Then I'm going to open up the FreeFX console from Video Copilot and click on the Take a Screenshot button. I'll now import this screenshot into the comp, and I'll make it 3D and parent it to the null we created. And then in the position properties, zero out the position. I'll probably have to scale the image up quite a bit. Tracking tends to create big values. If it helps, you can use transfer modes when scaling up and positioning to match. Don't worry about matching perfectly, we're about to distort stuff. Once you're done, double click on the image so that it opens in its own window, and using the pen tool, draw a mask cutting off the top floor and roof. Close down the image window, and now move the image upwards. Now, it won't line up perfectly, so go to Effect, Distort, CC Power Pin, and then use the controls to adjust the edges accordingly. You might also need to adjust the mask, but as you can see, I can scrub back through the video as needed. I can now repeat this for the other two walls. What sells this effect is the freehand camera. The benefit of this approach is its simplicity. The lighting matches up because it is the same building. You can and should use tricks like adding noise to the layer. I have a template that can help with that. But suppose you want to go further. To add a dome, for instance. Well, for that, we can start with a still of the location imported into Photoshop. Traditionally, we can then use other buildings from royalty-free image banks to augment the structure. In almost every situation, real-world photos are better for this than trying to create your own. The level of detail needed to be convincing could be described as fractal. Of course, these days, there's the other option. This is Photoshop Beta, and I can draw a box around the building from my screenshot and then ask Firefly's generative fill something like, add an extra floor to the building. And, hmm. Hmm. Not quite the marvel I was expecting. Don't get me wrong, these results are impressive in their own right, but that's not what I was wanting. So back in regular Photoshop, let's save this file and bring it into After Effects making sure to import as a comp option so we keep the individual layers. Once imported, the process is pretty much the same as the screenshot I took earlier. You can now line it up, turn off any layers that don't quite work. Photoshop will get you a better result, but no surprises, it will take longer. And that's the trick. But now I want to dress the scene to help disguise the extension and deal with a couple of issues. Ideally, I'd have addressed these during filming, but you've heard all about that. So first I have the pillar in the way, and these people, and these people in the shot. For the pillar, I tried everything. Rotoscoping didn't work, I think due to the light and shade. I tried animating a mask, but one frame wrong and the effect was ruined. I paid for this cool plugin called Mask Prompter from AE Scripts and got close, but it struggled when the pillar moved off screen. In the end, I solved this by taking a still of the pillar, cutting it out from the background, and then manually adjusting its position over the original. I dropped the opacity down to 50% while doing this to make it easier to change the position and rotation values. I also scaled it up slightly, so its edge was always the dominant edge. And bringing the opacity back up to 100%, I added the noise HLS auto effect with 2% on the lightness, so that there's some subtle movement. 
while it was a real pain, it successfully gave the scene that added realism by making the extra floors part of the background. To hide the groups of people, I jumped onto BlendSwap and found a couple of vehicles that were nicely made. I used Blender to convert these to OBJ files so I could import them into Video Copilot's Element 3D. If you want to know more about how to convert models, check out this tutorial from my Blendon FX series. Because After Effects Camera Tracker had created a camera in 3D space for me, positioning the models was child's play. I had all the models on the same layer, but in different groups in Element. I then used Element's Group Utilities option to create 3D nulls, which gave me an easy way to position and rotate each model. I also grabbed this rocket thing so I could add a sculpture to the square. That wasn't to hide anything, but I placed it at an empty part of the plaza to draw your eye. Magicians call this misdirection, and it is the most effective visual effects trick I know. The light was really strong on the day I filmed, so I had nice strong shadows to play with. I made a plane in Element and applied the matte shadow texture. Using the Ray Tracer option in Element Shadow Settings, I then created a parallel light for the sun and positioned it so that the model's shadows looked about right. The birds are available as a video on Production Crate, and I manually positioned that video to get them flying across the scene. Again, something else to look at. Finally, for the explosion, I used Production Crate's Ultimate Explosion. It's a 2D video, so I made it a 3D layer, and using a null generated as before, I was able to easily place it in the scene. Because I had the light though, the layer responds to those cues, so I went into its material options and turned that off. With all that done, everything looks a little too bright and clean, so I dropped the whole comp into my Quick Cheats project and set about using the different layers and effects to adjust the shot to look more stylized. It definitely helps disguise the 3D objects in the scene. As I mentioned in the Quick Cheats video, Lumetri Color does a lot of the heavy lifting here, with the creative presets making it simple to get a stylized look. But what do you think? Did I succeed? Have you tried similar shots yourself? If you have, please post them below. I'd love to see them. Эй, где вы? Я жду на площади. Вы не поверите, но клянусь, я только что видел парня этого мстителя Ника Фьюри. Я сделал.